And welcome sports fans to today's roundtable. Glad you've joined us as we're starting to wrap up the fall sports season. We're into the semifinal round of the high school football playoffs for the state of Missouri. We've got some local teams participating, and we're going to talk about that in a few moments. Also starting to look into the winter sports season, notably basketball, especially with us here at YHC and SeymourSportsZone.com. We'll be bringing you plenty of basketball games once again this year here on Channel 21 on your new wave cable, as well as online at SeymourSportsZone.com. Dot com And we've got the full schedule for our broadcast this year. And we're going to go by each one of the games that we'll bring to you this year for High School Basketball Live on TV. And also we're going to take, uh, take a look at some uh, college football games and pro football games taking place this weekend. The season starting to come down to the last two weeks of the season for college football. So the, winter, or the fall sports pretty much wrapped up besides football, and getting ready for high school basketball going forward. And uh, to start off with a few uh, stories from this week, sticking with junior high basketball here in southeast Missouri in the Stoddard County Activities Association as the uh, tournament wrapped up this past week. And it was Bernie winning the 8th grade tournament, defeating Dexter in the 8th grade championship game. Bernie takes the junior high. Championship in the Stoddard County Activities Association Tournament. So uh, Bernie takes the 8th grade and Dexter's 7th grade. Run away with the 7th grade title for the Stoddard County Tournament as they defeated Bernie pretty handily in the championship game. The Dexter Bearcats taking away first place in the 7th grade tournament for Stoddard County. It seems like those two teams match up each year in one of those 7th and 8th grade Championship games, Bernie and Dexter, is uh, it's a big rivalry between those schools, of course, and it just seems like that just uh, rolls right into high school. So uh, congratulations to those two teams winning this year's Stoddard County Activities Association Tournament, 7th and 8th grades. And uh, some big games taking place this afternoon at 1 o'clock. We've got 1 o'clock starts for high school Football and uh, taking a look at the games taking place today. Uh, Malden uh, takes on not Lamar, it's Palmyra. Malden takes on Palmyra in the Class Two semifinals today. In the Class Two semifinals, Malden's got a an, another big game this week as they had one last week, and this is the game to take them to the dome in St. Louis as they will match up in the Class Two semifinals against Palmyra, and Palmyra taking a long trip to southeast Missouri, pretty much the length of the state almost. They're in uh, the northwest part of the state, up above Hannibal, uh, just an hour away from the Iowa state line. So they're taking quite the trip down to southeast Missouri for the game later on today at 1 p.m., and as uh, Malden will take on Palmyra in the semifinals and uh, looking into this team a bit, uh, they got quite the running back in a Philip Bland. Philip Bland, quite a running back and defensive back for Palmyra. And he had over 200 yards rushing in last week's game as they defeated Lutheran North 38-28. to And he's a, not, a big, not a big kid. I think he's about 5'10", just maybe over 160 pounds. Not a big kid at all, but quite the speedster for Palmyra. So that's certainly a player that the Mullen Green Wave going to look uh, keep their eye on for today in that semifinal game. So uh, Mullen's got a, and this Palmyra team's a pretty much uh, ground-oriented team. They don't pass the ball a whole lot. They, they move the ball on the ground, which is probably quite a bit of the teams that Mullen's faced this year. Hadn't seen too many pass-happy teams this year. Connor Ritter threw it a little bit last week against the Green Wave. Uh, Crothersville could put it up in the air with Peyton Faulkner, but uh, probably a more ground attack that you'll see out of Palmyra for today. And for the Green Wave, of course, they got a big r rushing attack with Nick and Callis Thompson. And Chapin Riley uh, threw the ball quite well last week. He had four, four, uh, four touchdowns uh, last week against Cardinal Ritter and had some really nice throws down the field. So, I uh, wouldn't be surprised if Mullen goes to the air and tries to get, try to get some yards down the field as Palmyra's got a pretty stiff defense. They give up points, but uh, Mullen's giving up some points too. So I expect a high-scoring game, 
probably going into the 30s, if not the 40s, for this contest. It's just hard to hold down Malden and their offense and the way they can move up, uh, move up the field with their offensive line. They've got a big line on both sides. Um, but the only thing, really, Malden's weakness is probably their secondary and their pass defense. They've given up quite a few yards in the secondary against some uh, passing offenses. But uh, with this team being a ground-oriented team and their strength not in the passing game, that really plays to Malden's strength. Uh, their front seven, uh, their big guys up front, the linebacker there with Nick Thompson uh, at middle linebacker being able to, to stuff the run. So, We'll see how it plays out later on this afternoon. It's a 1 p.m. start at the Swamp in Malden. We will not bring that game to you. I know that a lot of people will be expecting us to bring it uh, as we did last week in St. Louis, but we will not bring that game to you live here on YHC. You'll have to show up at the Swamp to uh, catch that game uh, in Malden. So uh, good luck, Green Wave. Hopefully they can pull it out and advance to the state championship game next week at the Edward Jones, Edward Jones Dome in St. Louis. And, of course, uh, the Green Wave, uh, quite a unit there. Going back the past couple of years, made it to the semifinals last year, coming up a bit short to Lamar, which Lamar is on the other side of the bracket in the semifinal round. They've got an undefeated season going, and they are taking on uh, Lafayette County. Lafayette County in the semifinals, and the winner of them will advance on to take on the winner of Malden and Palmyra in the state championship game. And uh, if the Malden Green Wave were to advance, they would play next Friday. I believe that's a, probably a – I didn't see what time that's. Probably a, around a 4 o'clock start, maybe a 4 or 6 o'clock start next Friday at the Edward Jones Dome in St. Louis. And the game will be televised, not here on Channel 21, but it will be on Channel 25 – uh, that's Fox Sports Midwest. They televise those games on Fox Sports Midwest, all of them, class one through six, uh, pretty much the whole day. They're on Fox Sports Midwest on channel 25 on your new wave cable. I can't remember what it is in HD. Uh, that one's away from me uh, for the HD channel, but your SD channel is channel 25. But nonetheless, Fox Sports Midwest state championship games. Uh, they're on channel 25. And take a look at uh, some other games. Uh, Valley Catholic just up the way. They're in the Class 1 mix as well for the sixth year in a row. They are going through for their sixth straight state championship. Valley Catholic is. They're in the semifinals taking on Marceline, which, is, which was the state championship just two years ago. They're right there in the mix once again. They'll take on uh, the winner. That will take on the winner of Skyline and Hamilton Penny. Hamilton Penny's been there in the mix as well. Uh, I believe uh, Penny was in there a few years ago, I think three years ago, taking on Valley Catholic. Western was in the championship game last year, not there in the mix there. But uh, Hamilton, Penny, and Marceline been there in the mix there with Class 1 over the last few years. But uh, unbelievable. Valley Catholic going for their sixth straight state championship. They've got quite the dynasty up there at St. Genevieve with uh, Valley Catholic. So... Quite a run they've made and looking to secure another undefeated season, which they did have a bit of a tough time last week with Thayer. They only got a seven-point victory over Thayer last week. Thayer's no joke in Class 1. Very tough team uh, just out west of us and uh, had, had a bit of a game there. Only won by seven points. I think it was a 17-10 to 10 score between those two. Quite a fight there, but Valley Catholic advances and a chance to advance to their sixth straight state championship game and actually i think they're in their it'd be their seventh straight because i think that last i think it was penny beating them six years seven years ago in the state championship so i think it, it would make their seventh straight state championship berth so uh quite a run there with valley catholic and it's no different with lamar in class two they're going for their fifth straight state championship in class two so uh, they've made a quite run. They've, they've won four in a row. Valley Catholics won five in a row, going for their sixth. Lamar's won four, going for their fifth. And uh, to not forget about uh, Cape Central taking on Webb City this afternoon as well up at Cape Central High School in Cape Girardeau. Big game there, a rematch of last year's Class 4 State Championship where Webb City uh, defeated Cape Central last year. Cape Central had 14 to nothing score in the first quarter, but didn't score again. Webb City took that game 
from there on out and it was a route in st louis there at the, at the dome and a replay a rematch of last year's state championship as cape central takes on web city once again this afternoon and uh, you know, cape central is going to have their hands full uh you know al young's doing a lot for that team they don't have a whole lot in the passing game with uh, Chisholm there, they're, they're doing a lot on the ground and getting the ball to Al Young and some other playmakers, but uh, not a whole lot going through the air. It's a lot of a, a ground game, so um, it's going to be quite a predictable uh, game plan from the Tigers to get Al Young involved, mostly with the run, not as much with the pass, and Web City is just strong in all facets, and certainly Web City will be the favorite, but you know with it being in Cape Central's home field, hopefully they, they get that home crowd behind them and uh, get out on them early because that's certainly what it'll take against Webb City. And they're going after their sixth straight state championship. They won five in a row themselves in Class 4 going after their sixth straight state championship this season. And, uh, you know, it's quite the dynasties here in Missouri right now with Valley Catholic going after six in a row, Lamar going after five in a row, and Webb City going after six in a row. So it's just unbelievable uh, that three of these teams uh, and six of the class, three of the classifications out of the six are going after at least five straight state championships. It's just uh, been quite the run for Valley Catholic, Lamar, and Webb City in high school football here in the state of Missouri. And, um, yeah, those are the, the three classifications that are being represented here in southeast Missouri. So we'll see how that plays out later on today in those semifinal games. So it's going to be fun to watch, see what happens later on today. And we're going to take a break and be back with our basketball broadcast schedule for this season for YHC TV here on your new wave channel 21 as well as SeamoSportsZone.com and we're going to be back with that coming up. Save time this holiday season and shop the Ford Friends and Neighbors event at Harry Blackwell Ford in Malden. You've always had an inside deal with us. We have got lower prices on our website, like this F-350, now only $52,346. This F-150, now only $31,534. This 2015 Taurus, now only $26,388. Whether you come take a test drive or visit us on the web, you get the real inside deal here at Harry Blackwell Ford in Malden. NFL Red Zone, the channel that brings you every touchdown from every game on Sunday afternoons. Watch the most exciting moments like never before, live in HD. Every touchdown from every game, live on one channel, NFL Red Zone. Introducing New Wave Wi-Fi at home. Now you can stay connected to the web and not the wall. One connection connects multiple computers, so you can surf the Internet from any room in your home with no wires, no worries, and no limits to what you can do. Everything is included. One simple call is all it takes. Connect everyone, everywhere, with New Wave Wi-Fi at home. Wireless modem service now included with every bundle package. Call 1-888-8-NEW-WAVE to... And welcome back, and now we're going to take a look at the basketball broadcast schedule. We're going to bring to you right here on Channel 21 on your new wave cable and online for webcasts at SeamoSportsZone.com and even YHCTV.com. And take a look at our schedule. First, we want to mention that all of our games will be live. We intend for every single one of them to be live right here on Channel 21 and online at SeamoSportsZone.com. So that's quite a, an advancement we've made over the past couple of years or a number of years since we've been uh, broadcasting and webcasting, uh, we just made strides each year. And I think the last year we brought every game live as well. I know there was a couple of sites that were toss-ups, whether we'd be able to or not. Indeed, uh, last year's games were all live, and this year plan for them to be as well. So 
it's quite a quite an advancement we've made over the past couple of years and go ahead and moving on to uh, the schedule to look forward to coming up first is december 4th the bernie invitational tournament finals that invitational tournament we open up with pretty much every year cycles between bernie hawkham and campbell and it's in bernie this year and we look to bring you that game this year right here on yhc tv and seymour sport zone Dot com and that's on a Friday night at around 8.30, so look forward to that one. Uh, December 7th, Hay Ties at Campbell for that next game, Hay Tie Campbell. That's a Boot Hill Conference game there. And also the next night, December 8th, we've got Kelly at Bloomfield. Then December 10th, Neelyville at Clarkton. December 11th, Campbell at Malden. December 15th, Kennett at Malden. And December 18th, we've got the Clarkton Holiday Tournament Finals. And December 21st, get Bell City at Risco. Then the Bloomfield Christmas Tournament getting underway on the 26th going through the 30th. That's a Saturday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. All 26 games brought to you live right here on YHC and SeamallSportZone.com. January 5th, Twin Rivers at Portageville. December 7th, or excuse me, January 7th, Hawkham at Portageville. January 8th, Advance at Bernie. And December, excuse me, January 12th, Dexter at Bloomfield in Stoddard County. January 15th, Bernie at Dexter, also in the Stoddard County Conference. Big rivalry there. January 18th, Park Hill Central. This is a girls' game. Park Hill Central, the defending Class 3 state champions, travel south to take on the Dexter Lady Bearcats. January 18th, big one there in the regular season. January 19th, Malden at Haytai in the Boot Hill Conference. January 22nd, Sykeston at Kennett. It's a big SEMO Conference matchup there. January 25th, Gideon at Portageville. And then the 26th, the next night, Gideon at Risco in the Tri-County Conference. January 29th, uh, Stoddard County Activity Association Finals. That's four games, championship and third place games for JV and Varsity at Dexter. Four games that evening on the 29th. Then February 2nd, Marmaduke at Rector there in Arkansas. And February 5th, the Budo Conference Finals at Haytai. That's two games, the finals for JV and Varsity that evening at Haytai. February 9th, we've got Bell City at Dexter in the Stoddard County Conference. February 11th, Piggott at Rector there in Northeast Arkansas. February 12th, Dexter at Kennett in the SEMO Conference. February 15th, the girls' game, Popper Bluff at Dexter in the SEMO Conference there for the girls. February 16th, Crothersville at Kennett. February 18th, Scott County Central at New Madrid County Central. February 22nd, a girls' game, Jackson at Dexter. February 23rd, Popper Bluff at Dexter. February 25th, a girls' game, Sykeston at Dexter, a, replay, or a rematch of last year's Class 4 District 1 championship game, and we might just see that once again this year. And February 26th, the next day, wrapping up our regular season is Cape Central at Dexter, a SEMO Conference matchup. And, of course, we'll bring some district and state tournament games later on in the year in March. They're late February and March, but, of course, those are to be determined on the specific dates. So there's your schedule for this year as we're getting ready for... High school basketball here in southeast Missouri and northeast Arkansas. So hopefully you'll join us for some high school basketball once again this season. And we're getting ready for another fine season. And we, uh, the way that things work out, we'll possibly have our basketball preview here on the roundtable next Saturday for the roundtable. So be sure to tune in for that as we uh, look to bring you our basketball preview right here on YHC and SeamallSportsZone.com. And we're pretty much uh, uh, putting together kind of what uh, teams are expected to bring back this year. We're going to have some uh, coach interviews throughout the week that we're going to put together and show for the roundtable as well. So quite a, quite a bit coming for next week's roundtable for our basketball preview. I think one uh, we try to do that over Thanksgiving weekend. And uh, we'll see how that works out. Uh, you know, whether Malden goes and plays up the dome, we might have a few, few less contributors to contribute towards that. But we'll see what happens. But surely it'll be in the next few weeks that we'll bring you our basketball preview right here on YHC and SeamallSportsZone.com. 
And uh, let us take one more break, and we're going to take, uh, take a look at some college and pro football games taking place this weekend. That coming up next. Clear! There's a better way to jumpstart your soil back to health. Apply Enzone to protect and increase nitrogen efficiency without killing bacteria. Apply Prevent to increase phosphorus availability and reduce fixation. Better yet, use them both to get more from your fertilizer investment and see higher potential yields. Ag Explorer, your prescription for healthy soil. Deposit your check here. Or here. Or even there. Deposit your check wherever you are with First Midwest Bank's new mobile deposit. Just tap, snap, deposit. It's that simple. New mobile deposit from First Midwest Bank, serving the communities we call home. And welcome back. And now let's take a look at some college and pro football games taking place this weekend uh, to look forward to just down to the last few weeks of college football. Got some big games today to look forward to. Uh, not so big one here. Florida Atlantic taking on 8th ranked Florida. Purdue at 5th ranked Iowa in the Big Ten. 12th ranked Michigan at Penn State. 9th ranked Michigan State at 3rd ranked Ohio State. That's a big Big Ten matchup there taking place today, uh, probably the game of the week for, for college football. 20th ranked Northwestern at 25th ranked Wisconsin in the Big Ten. 24th ranked USC at 23rd ranked Oregon in the Pac-12. 10th ranked Baylor at 6th ranked Oklahoma State. That's a big Big 12 matchup there this weekend. 15th ranked LSU at 22nd ranked Ole Miss in the SEC. 18th ranked TCU at 7th ranked Oklahoma in the Big 12. And taking a look at our few local games here, uh, we got UT Martin at SEMO, and actually Arkansas State defeated uh, UL Monroe earlier. I think that was a last week's game. So uh, Arkansas State not playing today, but SEMO is taking on UT Martin in Cape Girardeau later on today. And uh, the Red Hawks stand at 4-6 and six on the year with this victory. Uh, I think UT Martin's just ahead of them in the standings. UT Martin's at fourth place in the OVC. SEMO's in fifth. If uh, SEMO defeats UT Martin, they'll have the same amount of losses, I believe. But uh, I think UT Martin's got one more win, if I have that correctly. So um, UT Martin's basically a game behind in the conference, I believe. So uh, games played, I mean, that that is, and uh, Seymour's got a chance to jump them by the end of the year with that victory today. So uh, Seymour with that victory can get, the, get into the top half of the OVC Conference. And right now Arkansas State stands at 7-3 and three on the year, having another great year there in Jonesboro. And uh, we'll be looking forward to seeing how it all plays forward with Seymour and Arkansas State in the weeks ahead. So uh, college football playoff getting a lot of interest gathered. Uh, towards college football and as you see there the the four teams in right now Ohio State uh, Notre Dame Clemson and Alabama those are the four teams in right now and quite a you know, there's going to be controversy anyway how many teams how many ever teams you include that's just the the nature of college sports and uh uh, but yeah that's one thing right now the SEC and Big Ten is getting a lot of favor in the uh Within the committee, it seems like they're certainly getting more favored than the Pac-12 and the Big 12. So we'll see how that plays out uh, for the rest of the way. I know there's some very talented teams there in the Pac-12 and uh, the Big 12 as well. The Big 12 is probably one of those overlooked conferences this year. Oklahoma's really playing well uh, here late in the season. So, you know, they've got a, a shot at making it with only one loss. You've got some teams in there that are undefeated. Uh, you know, Iowa, yeah, they're, they're ranked number five on the outside right now, but they're undefeated and uh, might be just a bit 
uh, overrated. I don't know if they're overrated, but probably just not as good as some of the other teams that are certainly undefeated, but even with one loss in uh, college football. Certainly not the strength of schedule there with the Hawkeyes. But uh, Ohio State's one of those teams you just don't uh, they they kind of they kind of seem like last year's Florida State. You know, they're defending national champion, undefeated, so you've got to you know, you're, it's almost obligatory to leave them in the, the the four team playoff here early on, but they haven't played consistently all year long. Now they went with JT Barrett at quarterback. They've played better, but uh, just hasn't just haven't played four quarters of football pretty much all year long. It seems like so, but they've got the team. They've got so many players coming back from that team, national championship team last year. So it's almost a given that they're going to start turning it on here late in the season. But they've got quite the test with Michigan State. It is in Columbus there on their home field. But I think Michigan State could give them some trouble if uh, they struggle out of the gate. So we'll see how that plays out. But, um, you know, Clemson right there. Clemson is one of those unproven teams that have put together a fine year in the ACC, which ACC's kind of get, gotten a better reputation with Florida State doing well and, you know, some other teams – uh, doing better as well, but Clemson is one of those undefeated teams that's put together a fine year. Don't have any, don't have any just uh, really impressive wins, but they've been consistent. They've been winning games, so uh, you know it's 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 fun to watch. It's, uh, it's I haven't been a big college football fan myself, but this playoff cer- certainly has uh, you know uh, an added dimension to college football and really making uh, the regular season much more uh, much more. Uh, enjoyable to see what teams match up and see who's going to jump into that mix there in the top four so uh and there's so many different styles of play that's certainly the case with college football right now in the big 10 and the ac or the sec and the big 10 it's much slower tempo uh certainly less plays in a game but then the big 12 and the pac 12 it's so much more fast pace much more passing uh so many more possessions in a game it's just it is amazing just to see how different uh, styles of play across the country is being played uh, within college football, which makes it exciting too. You get these different styles going up against each other, and you don't really know what to expect. And you know, certainly biases are all college football fans, especially uh, within the SEC and the Big Ten. They think they play a superior style of play, but uh, it just all matters of what, who gets on the field and executes, basically executes their scheme. So it's been exciting, and I'm looking forward to seeing how it all plays out. I know Mizzou's having a tough stretch right now and, uh, you know, the controversy that's been around that campus for the last few weeks and how they can put a season together and to finish up here. And these Razorbacks, Arkansas Razorbacks, have really looked good over the past few weeks putting together some fine victories over LSU, notably, uh, last week. And they've got a game with Mississippi State today uh, with the Mississippi State Bulldogs. That'll be a big one. Uh, if they get a win there, they take on Mizzou. And, uh, well, they're looking good to finish up the year. If it, if it weren't for those first few losses at the beginning of the year, uh, they really would be looking good right now. They would probably be in the playoff if it weren't for uh, probably two of those losses earlier in the year, like uh, Texas A&M. And even before that, uh, man, I can't even remember that team that they lost to. Uh, just wasn't in the mix at all. So uh, tough start for the Razorbacks, but finishing great as they've been playing the last few weeks. And they can they can run they can run the table the rest of the way and go eight and four and be second in the SEC West behind Alabama. So they're positioning themselves quite well for the end of this season. And now let's take a look at some pro football games taking place this weekend. And uh, you got the Colts at the Falcons, the Jets at the Texans. And, uh, boy, this, these two games right here are quite important. The Colts stand at 4-5 and five on the year with a win. They can go to 500. But the Texans are right there as well. They're right there at 4-5 uh, and five as well. They got a big win this past – not this past Thursday night, but uh, – um, last Monday night. Monday night football, it was the Texans defeating the Bengals in Cincinnati. The Bengals were undefeated, you know, looking like they were going to put together, oh, well, they, they still got a fine season, but uh, they were talking about potential, you know, AFC championship game, even Super Bowl berth with the Bengals, and, you know, the Texans go on the road and defeat the undefeated Bengals in prime time in Cincinnati, which I know 
Cincinnati's vulnerable in prime time. I think they've went four and eight in the past twelve games they've played in prime time or in the playoffs. So uh, I guess they were due for a loss there in prime time against the Texans. But the Texans are right there in the mix in the division. You know, here in the last few years the Colts have just run away with that AFC South, but the Texans are looking good to stay competitive in that AFC South. So we'll see what uh, what happens there. If the Texans were to win, defeat the Jets, and the Colts lose, they're in first place in the AFC South. So it could be a battle there for the AFC South this season. The Buccaneers at the Eagles in the NFC. The Broncos at the Bears. Quite uh, So many storylines in this matchup, of course. Peyton Manning is going to be setting out this game after uh, plants are uh, some plantar fasciitis uh, or fascia, whatever, whatever you call it, but uh, some foot problems in his left foot, even rib and shoulder injuries to Peyton Manning. So he's going to probably sit out a few weeks, I would assume, to, to get rested up and get healthy for the, the home stretch here, the late stretch in the season. And the Bears, led by John Fox, former coach of the Broncos over the last handful of years, uh, and let go last year. I wouldn't say let go. I guess they mutually parted ways was the official designation of that. But uh, John Fox goes with the Bears. The Bears playing quite well. Adam Gaze there, the offensive coordinator, has been with the Broncos the last couple of years as well. Has uh, put Jay Cutler in a pretty good position. He's playing pretty good football at the quarterback position. And Brock Osweiler takes the reins for the Broncos with his first NFL start as the backup for the Broncos. And, you know, uh, if there's one team that knows Brock Osweiler is the coaching staff for the Bears, John Fox and Adam Gaze, uh, you know, that's that's probably one team that Brock Osweiler didn't want to face other than maybe the Patriots, which they'll get them next week. The Broncos will. Uh, that's, that's a coaching staff that probably knows him better than any other team because they've had him over the past few years as a backup. So uh, they're, they're in Denver, so. Could be an intriguing matchup there between the Broncos and the Bears uh, for Sunday. And take a look at some other games. We've got the Rams at the Ravens, the Cowboys at the Dolphins, the Redskins at the Panthers, the undefeated Panthers at 9-0. They go to 10-0. They'll certainly be favorites in that game with the Redskins. The Redskins have been playing good ball. They've really put together some nice wins here in the last few weeks. And the Packers at the Vikings. This is a nice matchup. The Packers have lost three straight games. Uh, they, they're in a tough stretch right now. And uh, coming off losses to the Panthers last week, the week before, uh, the Broncos, and the week before that. Uh, golly, that one's going to get away from me, but uh, it'll come to me. But uh, they're, they're coming off three straight losses and take on the Panthers or excuse me, uh, the Vikings, which the Vikings have put together a nice year. Uh, they're in the NFC North, so the Packers are going to have have their hands full with the Vikings on the road in Minnesota this weekend. And the 49ers at the Seahawks in the NFC West, certainly not the matchup it's been in past few, few years, but uh, the Seahawks having a tough stretch. They're 4-5, and five, the two-time defending NFC champions at 4-5 and five on the year, and the 49ers have had a rough season, but you never know, it could be a... It could be a dogfight between those two for this weekend. And then Sunday night football, the Bengals at the Cardinals, the Arizona Cardinals. Press a victory on the road against Seattle last Sunday night and that victory over the Seahawks. And I think they stand at 7-2 and two on the year. I think they're the best team in the NFC right now. The Arizona Cardinals, Bruce Arians has uh, led that team to a fine season. They've had a few kind of head-scratching losses with the Rams and um, – uh, the Steelers, the Rams and the Steelers. So uh, they put put together a fine game last week. Carson Palmer's arguably the best uh, quarterback in the league right now, performance-wise. So uh, they got quite the team there in Arizona. Don't get to see them that, that often. They don't play in very many primetime games, but we'll probably see them flex to some uh, primetime games here in the latter half of the season. And in Monday Night Football, the Bills at the Patriots. Could be an intriguing AFC matchup there, AFC East. Patriots are down a few guys to injury. Deion uh, Lewis, talented running back. Got, uh, he was lost to a torn ACL a few weeks back. And then Julian Edelman broke a, a bone in his foot. Uh, basically the same injury as Des Bryant suffered for the Cowboys. Hurt, uh, hurt his foot in last week's game with the Giants. He's out for probably at least until the playoffs. So 
Uh, we'll see how the Patriots uh, bounce back from that injury. They've still got some playmakers out there with Amendola and Gronkowski, so uh, we'll see how it plays out. The Bills didn't play that well in opening, opening week at home at Buffalo against the Patriots, but uh, they should be more prepared this week as they got quite the defense there. But they're, they, they really struggle at the beginning of the year. Rex Ryan uh, coming in with this group, very very good defensive coach, just a different scheme. Uh, and they're the Certainly the the talent they've got, the personnel they've got, doesn't really match his, his scheme that he likes to run. They, they, they've been built for a 4-3, uh, you know, one-gap system, and now he, he likes to run the 3-4 with a two-gap. So, uh, you know, it's just different styles, you know, different personnel that he's not used to, and, you know, they're starting to put it together defensively. So Tyrod Taylor, the quarterback, has been playing well at quarterback the last few weeks. So it could be a game there Monday night with the Bills and the Patriots. Should be a good one. So those are the games to look forward to this weekend. And uh, as I said, we got these high school games today. Hopefully Malden Valley and Cape Central can put some good, good games together advance on to the state championships next weekend, actually next Friday at the Show Me Bowl in St. Louis, the Edward Jones Dome. So we'll see what plays out in those games taking place today. And, of course, looking forward to high school basketball once again this year. And it's uh, exciting getting ready, especially doing all these games live. That's what's exciting about what we do, being able to bring these games live to the viewers at home and uh, just anywhere. If you've got friends and family want to tune in to uh, see your old alma mater play or the Bloomfield Christmas Tournament or just anything, we just, just, we're just glad that we can – uh, bring the games live to anyone right here on Channel 21 on New Wave Cable and even online at SeamallSportsZone.com and YHCTV.com. It's a lot of fun. Uh, by the end of the year, it's uh, <laughs> it wears on you, of course, uh, of course, after being three months at it two or three times a week. And even the Bloomfield Tournament, 26 games in four days, it takes its toll, but it's uh, probably the most enjoyable thing that we do that I uh, get involved in is bringing live basketball games to you right here on YHC. So that's what we've got for you today, and we appreciate you for tuning in. Hopefully you'll join us next week once again. And until then, I'm Tyler Wagner. Have yourself a nice weekend, and have yourself a great Thanksgiving because uh, we won't see you until after Thanksgiving for the next roundtable. So have a safe travel for Thanksgiving. Enjoy yourselves, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>